Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with great Kansas City vibraphonist Peter Schlamm. This is our second interview with Peter at Neon Jazz, and he is a transplant from the St. Louis area. And along with the electric tinks, he's been busy getting all over Kansas City and going around spots across the country. He's always fluid, pushing that jazz craft further, and he's a very big part of this local KC scene that is always moving in a forward direction and making everything more vibrant. So catch up with Peter and dig this 2017 interview, my friends. Hey, thanks for taking a minute out for me today. I appreciate it. Of course. Here, give me an idea of what has been going on with you lately. Well, I've been playing a lot around Kansas City as well as doing uh, quite a bit of traveling, um, playing. So generally that means, you know, getting out to New York and Los Angeles and doing stuff around the Midwest and also occasionally um, doing some stuff abroad in Europe as well. And then when I'm in Kansas City, I'm uh, I'm playing around town most nights of the week when I'm here. So a little bit more specifically, what shows have you had in New York and L.A. and even around the country? And more specifically, where are you playing and with who in Kansas City? Um, okay, well, my most uh, recent show, I played in Los Angeles with a uh, alto saxophonist named David Binney. Um, and we played at a, a venue called the Blue Whale. And... Um, Around Kansas City, um, I have a, a couple residencies, which include I play with uh, Steve Lambert's quintet um, on Sunday nights at the Green Lady Lounge, and then I play with uh, with a trio, my trio at Majestic um, on Tuesday nights. And who's in that trio? Uh, the trio is with Ryan Lee on drums and Ben Leifer on the bass. Now, talk to me about Electronic Tinks. I know that Matt Villinger plays with you. When do you usually play, and kind of talk to me about that band. Well, so that band has been going for about two years now, and, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It, the personnel includes uh, Matt Villinger on keys, um, DeAndre Manning on the bass, Ryan Lee on the drums, Matt Otto on the saxophone and the Ewe and Herman Mahari on the trumpet. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the core nucleus of the group. Um, and we generally play about once a month. Uh, we no longer have, like, a residency every month somewhere, but we're still playing um, at Green Ladies Lounge, sometimes on First Fridays. Um, and then we're also um, starting to do a lot of other shows, um, and this year I'll be looking to kind of be booking a variety of venues and doing some bills with some other bands. Um, so it's going to be, I, I would say, you know, we're probably going to do about one show a month um, going forward this year at a variety of venues. So your last album, wasn't that 2014 that it came out? It did come out in 2014, correct. Okay, what was the name of that again? It was called Tinks, T I N K S. That's what. That's right. That was a great, and, great, uh, great album. Oh, um, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm uh, actually just I'm going to be getting out uh, my second one by the end of this year. So just kind of in the early phases of getting that going. So right on, perfect. So you you were born and raised in St. Louis. Yes, sir. Talk to me about growing up in St. Louis. What it was like, and and even what the jazz scene was like before you left. Well, uh, it was a great place to grow up, um, and when I, especially coming up in the jazz scene, um, I started playing jazz and vibraphone when I was in middle school, um, around the sixth grade, and I have an older brother who plays the piano, and he started kind of letting me uh, tag along to gigs with him starting when I was in about the eighth grade, and then I kind of became more of a part of the it was just being um, about midway through high school, maybe around my junior year. And um, there is, before I left especially, there was a lot going on at the time. There were kind of three uh, gigs that happened every week that were um, all with uh, great local musicians. Um, there was Tita Williams, who's a great piano player out there, who plays at Riddles every Wednesday night and Day of Stone. A saxophonist he played at Mangia every Friday, and his legendary uh, 
tenor player, the late great uh, Willie Aikens, played every Saturday night at Sproul's. And all of those residencies um, lasted 20-plus years. Um, unfortunately, the only one still going today is uh, is Dave Stone, who's still playing at Mangia. Um But when I was there, like those were kind of the three gigs. When I was in high school, those, those three things happened every week. So I would go out and listen to those bands. Um, they always had great people in the bands, and I would learn a lot and uh, sit in. And then my senior year of high school, I actually um, was asked to join Willie's band, so I got to play at Sproul's, and um, I learned a lot from him and having that opportunity to, to play with him every week um, for the, the last year that I was in St. Louis. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of great musicians there, and uh, they still there still are great musicians today, although there's may, maybe not quite as many places uh, to play for the musicians as there was when I was living there um, before college in the mid 2000s. So you went from you went from St. Louis to New York and then to Kansas City, correct? Well, I went from St. Louis to New York and then back to St. Louis. Um, I was in New York from 2006 to 2010, uh, where I attended and graduated from New School University. And then in May of 2010, I moved back to St. Louis, and I actually lived there for three years. And um, I was coming to Kansas City more and more, especially when I came back. Herman Mahari is one of my best friends, and uh, we met actually when we were both in high school. He's from Jefferson City, but we met through mutual friends, and then we did like the Missouri State Jazz Band together. So we always stayed in good touch, so I coming out to Kansas City since he started attending UMKT, which was 2006, the same year that I um, started at the new school. So I've been coming out to Kansas City since then, but then especially when I moved back to St. Louis, um, Herman and I would do stuff together, and um, especially out in Kansas City, and I started to meet more and more of the musicians in the Kansas City scene, and then um, I eventually made the move out to Kansas City in May 2013. And I've so been here ever since. So what's the big difference between Kansas City and St. Louis's jazz scenes? You know, and things probably go in cycles, but right at this point right now, I think there's been a big renaissance as far as places to play in Kansas City. And, uh, you know, there definitely have been some great young musicians um, that have moved here that I think have kind of revitalized the scene, but also... There are, are great musicians that were here all along too, you know, and great, you know, great young musicians that were here around the same time when I was going to new school. Um, there was kind of a wave of musicians, the IGMKC, including like Herman and Ben Leifer and Ryan and Steve Lambert, Andrew Lett, like several, several others too. So there's kind of a great, great crew of people that all came out here around the same time, and I feel like. I probably I, I know I wouldn't be out here if it wasn't for those guys and just kind of uh, me getting to know them and, and getting to know the Kansas City scene. Um, but, you know, I think St. Louis also has great musicians. There's just, unfortunately, you know, there have, there's been a few less places that are having jazz out there um, in recent times. So there's, there's maybe a little bit less going on at this point, but it's not necessarily for lack of musicians, but obviously having places to play and having, you know, multiple places where there's jazz happening every night, places for musicians to hang out and get together and hear each other, I think that's a really important part of having just a vibrant and vital scene, not only for the fact that people have a chance to, you know, work and make a living playing, but also just, you know, to have, like, an environment that cultivates the music and cultivates people getting to, you know, hang out together and learn together and grow together through each other. So that's that's a big benefit that Kansas City has going right now. You know, the thing to me, it seems, is that Kansas City used to be a springboard to go to another city, and now the way everything's kind of come back in this renaissance wave of Kansas City jazz musicians, it seems like Kansas City is actually a destination. Do you get that feeling as a transplant, so to speak, from another city that people want to stay here in Kansas City instead of, say, graduate from Bobby's program and go somewhere else? 
I definitely think it's getting to be more and more that way. I mean, it's still kind of it's kind of hidden in plain sight in a way because I think there are still a lot of people on the coast that don't necessarily know about it. Or I think people are kind of starting to hear about it, but until they really come and see it with their own eyes, I think a lot of people don't really know about it, you know. Um, and I think part of that is just because people on the coast don't tend to come to the middle as much, you know. We're right yeah. in the middle. But what I will say is my my friends and other musicians who have come through here have been pretty universally impressed with what's going on. And I think whenever someone does have a chance to come out here, they always uh, get get a great impression. So I think more and more it is starting to uh, to trend in that direction, I would say. Um and certainly regionally, I think it's become a, a, one of the main destinations, and I think it definitely has a chance to continue to come nationally. I mean, there it's just you know it's it's already happening, but I think it will it will continue to happen in that way. Yeah. You know. So, so let me ask you this about the Kansas City scene: How do you feel about the Kansas City jazz scene? What's going on right now? The musicians, just the overall vibe. I mean, I, I love it. I love being here. Um, I think. There is a lot of um, there are a lot of great musicians here, and it's great because it's not just there's starting to be a depth here to where there's not just like one person that you are excited to call on each instrument. There's multiple multiple people on each instrument, and I think that really has you know it's that that's ultimately the thing that helps a scene grow and thrive is uh, you know you need people to push you and to challenge you. Um, there can't just be one person, you know, like there, there needs to be just a multitude of people. And, uh, I mean, I think there have been a number of, of huge things that have helped. Obviously, what Bobby's done um, has helped draw a tremendous amount of young musicians here. And that way has been going for a while. Uh, Matt Otto coming here from Los Angeles has just been huge. And now he's over at KU. Um, so that is going to continue to help kind of a crop of young musicians um, want to come. So I think those, you know, having those guys, among others, at those programs is um, great for attracting, you know, kind of a, a new wave of players. But also, um, yeah, I mean, in general, like, there's, uh, I, I feel very uh, inspired and fulfilled musically with a lot of the opportunities that I have to play here and I, I enjoy I also just enjoy the city um, and living here and uh, yeah I I am very happy to be here you know. <laughs> what's the greatest thing about Kansas City um well that, that depends on who you ask but I think for me uh, what I love about Kansas City is the community. Um, so it, I just feel like there's a great community of uh, of musicians that really support each other and kind of work together and grow together and have a good sense of camaraderie, you know. And uh, but also I think I think they now you know people also are really starting to to really take things seriously and, and to push each other too. So I, but as far as the city itself, I think it also is great because it's, and I, you know, there are other cities that are affordable, but let's be honest, like having a place that's affordable to live in this industry is huge, you know, yeah. um, because there are places that are just cost prohibited to do exclusively music, you know, um, or jazz. And for a lot of people, you know, New York is one of those places, even, you know, a lot of the great, great musicians who live in New York are mostly making their money playing overseas, you know. They'll yeah. still, still do club dates in New York, but those don't actually pay that much for the most part. And um, so even the musicians that you look to as making it in New York, like the truth is those guys are, are making are making their money elsewhere, you know. Yeah. And New York is kind of the home base, but it's not like a, a sustaining 
home base, at least in the sense of, like, just, you know, if those musicians were just doing gigs in New York, it wouldn't be a sustainable thing for, for most, the vast majority of people who are musicians there, you know, even great yeah. ones. And in Kansas City, you know, it is actually possible. I mean, I for me, I, I very, I'm very much interested in uh, the world, you know, and I, I want to get my music out, you know, around the country and around the world and get to play with people who, you know, from a lot of places, and that's something that intrigues me. But Kansas City is a sustainable place to make a living as a musician, you know. So it's great to have that. And also, just personally, being from St. Louis, I really like the pace of the Midwest and, like, being in my home state. I don't know, for me, like, even though Kansas City isn't where I grew up, it still feels like home. I'm not saying it feels exactly like St. Louis, but it's a lot more similar of a vibe uh, from here to St. Louis than, like, New York City, yeah. So, so when you yeah, so when you were growing up, you obviously started out on the keys early on at five. What were some of your favorite albums, jazz wise, that got you baptized into jazz that you really admired and who you kind of emulated? Well, I mean, when I really started playing jazz, it was the same time I started playing vibraphone, and I heard. I actually went to the library with my dad, and I he had checked out a Lionel Hampton record, and we were listening. In the car on the way home, and flying home came on the first track, and I, I will never forget hearing that and just being so captivated and and wanting to do that. So really, that hearing hearing Hampton is what made me start wanting to play five. And you know, around that time, my brother was was uh, kind of starting to get into jazz piano. So I would often hear what he was doing and having a you know an older brother who plays is something that really inspired you and pushes you too because. You know, I would just try to be able to get good enough so I could jam with him and his friends. And just once I started doing it, like, there was kind of no looking back. Um, but so, yeah, on the vibraphone, Lionel Hampton was my first influence and is still my favorite vibraphonist. And, um, and then I, you know, there are other greats on the instrument and off the instrument, uh, another great vibraphonist who I got really into in late middle school and early high school was Stefan Harris. And uh, I had the opportunity to get to study with him when I was in New York, um, which had a huge impact on me as well. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I've also, you know, in more recent times, I should say it's the last 10 years, but I've been really influenced and inspired by Logan Richardson, who's, great alto saxophonist from Kansas City. Uh, he was living in New York at the time when I was out there, so I would go here and play whenever I could. And um, had some opportunities to get to play with him a bit in Kansas City. And so, I mean, I could name many more, but those are a few that come to mind. You know, all of those guys that you talk about have a very distinctive jazz voice. And, and when you do go through the catalog of the legends and those veterans that have been around for years, you know what their voice is. So let me ask you this. As someone that's been around for a long time, you've traversed from Kansas City to St. Louis to uh, New York. What is your voice? What voice have you accumulated over all this time that you give the fans? Well, I mean, I think I... I just strive to be myself, you know, and I think uh, I think it's just something where I just try to be honest and express myself honestly and just be myself. Um, and yeah, I, I you know it's it's something that is always evolving. I mean, you know, learning this music is a lifelong pursuit, and that's part of what uh, part of what is. It's just endlessly intriguing about it, you know. There's always more to learn, and there's always new things that you're going to hear and get interested in. And I think naturally, like, those things are kind of going to change and evolve as you change and evolve as a person. So what I what I try to do is just, you know, be, be honest and just, just play from a, you know, play from a place of joy and, and, uh, and honesty, and I just try to, be open as well and grow. So as far as saying I have this specific voice or that specific voice, I think it's, you know, it's hard to necessarily 
clarified in those terms, but I think I strive for those ideals and um, hope, I'm hopeful that they come across in my music. Are you always thinking about new music, making new music? Um, you mean from a compositional standpoint? or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so for me, I definitely, um, I definitely do write music and create, create songs. Um, my songwriting process, I, I tend to not, at this juncture, I, I don't really, uh, force writing songs and I kind of wait for moments of inspiration, um, to write a new composition. So while I am, you know, writing music, somewhat actively, I generally, you know, I kind of slowly expand my catalog. And at this at this juncture, um, I kind of have the creative liberty to write at my will, at my own will, because I don't really have any sort of um, deadline. That being said, like, I do very much care about um, adding a creative output. But I think, you know, I think composing is one way that you can do that. And I think it's that's important. It's important to me too. But I would rather have less songs and have them all be songs that are, uh, you know, I feel like are are meaningful to me. So I kind of tend to take my time with composition and wait for those moments when I feel like I really have something to say. And then, um, but you know, whether whether I'm playing the original of mine or an original of of a someone else's or a standard like I think no matter what material you're playing the great thing about playing this music is through improvisation you always have an opportunity to um, to express whatever idea you're having at a time you know so certainly compositions are important to you and that's an important part of of what I do and in you know especially in my original project um, I really focus on that but whatever song I'm playing, I'm trying to, to bring something to it, you know. So, you know, Kansas City is always bringing in people from other other places like St. Louis, like you, and even New York. And Bobby Watson's always churning out people from UMKC. What do you see as the future for Kansas City Jazz? Or, or what, I should say, what what would you like to see happen in the evolution and the future of jazz in Kansas City? Well, I think... Uh, what I would like to see happen is, I think, something that is already happening, which is I would just like to see, you know, uh, more great players move to Kansas City and um, and also just more great places to play here, you know. And I think both of those things are happening um, currently. And, I mean, I think the thing that, like the thing that I was mentioning before, I mean, it's, I just think that, uh, you know, just having more places is, is big just because having multiple uh, just multiple venues in town to where you can, you know, on any given night of the week, go out and hear great jazz. And, you know, if you finish a gig, you can go check something else out um, or go to a jam session that's happening, you know. And, um, yeah, as far as players, it's not that there aren't great players here because there absolutely are, but I feel like, you know, the more people that come, like, anytime you just have more players, it's just, it's only going to raise the level of everybody because, um, like, every every great player that's here is adding something um, special, you know, and unique. And I think that's something that naturally um, other musicians feed off of. You know, we feed off of each other and, and get inspired by each other and get ideas by each other. So, you know, I just hope that me kind of a, continu- a continuation of what's been happening, you know, and, and that's still happening now, so it's, uh, yeah, my hope is just that uh, what we have here just keeps building and, and growing, and uh, it's already it's already great now, and, I, and so looking forward, I just hope it continues on the path that, that it's on, and, um, and I think it will keep being a great place for the music here. So the one thing when you moved here and you were playing and since you've been here in Kansas city, has there been local players that you've played with that you've been really, you were really excited to play with for the first time that maybe even gave you butterflies that you were just like, wow, I'm playing with this person. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, Bob Bowman, I mean, is just a legendary, legendary bass player. And, uh, yeah, so really, and getting to know him, um, we both personally and musically has, has been huge. And, um, he just has a lot of knowledge, a lot of history of this music. And, um, yeah, he's, and, um, you know, there have been several people, I mean, Bobby Watson definitely too, um, in a couple of opportunities I've had to play with him. Um, and those guys, you know, so it's not just young musicians here, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of great musicians here that have, have been at this for a long time. I, and uh, I think that's that's an important part of the equation as well. You know. Who would you like to play with that you haven't played with here in town? Um, well, I honestly, I'm sure that there are some people here, um, especially some older musicians who might not be actively on the gig circuit as much now. And, uh, yeah, I definitely, I'm just, I'm constantly looking to meet more musicians and play with more musicians. So it's not necessarily that there's someone that I'm aware about uh, or that I'm aware of that I haven't played with. But, um, you know, whenever I meet someone and have the opportunity to get to play with another musician here, I'm grateful for the opportunity to do that. So, you know, but the nice thing is it's, it's a, it's a small, close community. So I think, you know, the people that stay active in the community, uh, I would say the vast majority of them I've had the opportunity to meet and play with, at least in some capacity, you know. Um, just because uh, because of the way the community works, whether it be a, a jam session, you know, or on a gig, um, the people, the, the most people who are actively playing here, I've, I've had been fortunate to have an opportunity to to play with at least in some sort of situation. So, and yeah, having having so many voices and so many players here is, uh, like I said, that's the source of inspiration and uh so that's that's something that I value a lot. So let's say we hook up in twenty years from now and we talk and you're kind of at a midpoint, you're getting to be kind of an older cat. What do you want to see happen in your career? Um well I would just kind of like to keep growing my opportunities um I would say uh, nationally and internationally. Um, just have have the, be in the position to where I can take my music um, around the country and, and hopefully around the world. Um, because I, I think you know that's just that's something that I've always wanted to do, and I love I love getting to travel and have the opportunity to meet people and just see different places and meet people and musicians from around the country and around the world. So I would hope that I'm, in 20 years, I would hope, first of all, that I'm still here. That would be great. And if I am, I, I hope that I'm still in the physical health to where I would have the ability to still play the vibraphone and, and travel with the vibraphone and the, the demands that that takes, you know. And, um, yeah, I just hope to keep keep growing musically and uh, personally because it's definitely what I want to be doing for for the rest of my life. So it's kind of a, uh, it's just like I was saying before, um, it's, it's a lifelong pursuit and passion, and it's also what I'm making as my career and my profession, and, and I would, I hope to continue doing that. <laughs> right on. Forward. So I hope in 20 years, I'm, if, if we talk that, I'm still here and I'm still playing the microphone and that I've just had, you know, been blessed with opportunities to, um, to get my music out there, you know. Right on. So of all the people that you know, family, friends, um, business associates, those that you play live for, they all have a perception of who you are. But you also have a perception of who you are. When you wake up and face the world, who do you think you are? Indeed, um, I I strive to be a um, 
I try to be a positive person to um, an honest person and someone who is is bringing like joy and into the world and through music and otherwise. And that's what I strive to do. Um, and I feel like music is it's just as great to have the opportunity to meet a, a lot of different people from a lot of places. So I, I guess I guess I'm rambling, but I yeah, it's just it's a tough question to try to answer succinctly. No, that's but good. I I would say yeah, I just I strive to be like a positive source of energy in the world. Perfect. That's my goal. Right on. That's perfect. Hey, Peter, thank you again for taking some time out to talk with me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, for doing this article and for think, for thinking of me and Matt. We really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to the cool and wise Peter Schlam for his time and his dedication to Kansas City Jazz. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or go to YouTube.com and type in Neon Jazz, and for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Thank you all so much for coming. Neon Jazz.